Park. So here we have uh, my kind of cartoon uh, design, 3D CAD design of the Laddie spacecraft. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of working on the top at the moment. Uh, you see the antennas, uh, some of the other devices up there. The long horizontal tube is an in one of the instruments. That's the orange thing that's there, the UV-8 telescope. Uh, I still need to add the star trackers, uh, which are the uh, black things that are kind of sticking up uh, with the orange bases. Um, this has been kind of fun to do. I haven't done anything uh, quite this detailed. So to start that, we're going to add a, a box. I'm not going to do the framework for the uh, star tracker. I'm just going to add in uh, a box and then rotate it so that it's uh, that like that that angle. Uh, the menus don't show up here. It's kind of interesting. So just rotate it around 45 degrees and uh, and then push it down into the top of the surface. You can tell a little bit here uh, what's uh, up above and below the surface. I'm going to tweak it down so that it's below the level of the surface. Um, and then uh, I'm going to add, uh, once I get that right, then I'm going to add some other, uh, another big... Uh, kind of a rectangular there, a box, and splay its sides out to look like the Star Tracker. So add the uh, add it to that face. Uh, I'm typing in numbers, you can't really tell. Uh, trying to make it the right size. Yeah, it's about that long. Uh, this is kind of a, like I said, a cartoony level uh, of the uh, representative of the spacecraft, but uh, I'm not trying to be super accurate here or anything. I'm really just trying to give you a a feel for what it looks like. I have to think about as I'm doing this uh, how I'm actually going to print it. See that the thing at 45 degrees that it's not going to print um, and the top of this needs to get splayed out so uh, I need to try and tweak these out. Uh, it's not going to really let me do that um, so yeah I, mean, I don't really want to skew it too much. Well a little bit and then I can uh, so that's the, uh, that's the that's the tweak version of moving an entire face. Essentially, if you select all the edges, you select the one face. The same as selecting the face that those edges are on. Uh, no, I didn't want to select that. Let's select this one, and then I'm selecting the menus here, and then I'm going to pull it out. This is tweaking that face, so I'm making a kind of a skewed uh, rectangular. Um, I can't really go much below about uh, you know 40 degrees I gotta keep it more than 45 degrees off the face so because it started out at 45 and now I've pulled it down I'm actually at the wrong angle but we'll fix that here in a minute uh, I'm gonna tweak some of these other angles uh, move some things in and out it's kinda hard to see when you're working uh, with a lot of details like this but move the thing ah it's gonna be too small I really can't do that um, probably gonna put that back and then Actually, um, let's, let's see, I probably ought to just tweak the top instead. Yeah, escape out of that. Make the top wider rather than making the bottom skinnier. So I select this face uh, and then pull it out a little bit. There we go, that's better. Okay, so let's see. I still need to display the other uh, edges out. Uh, grab that one. Uh, let's see. We'll move him out. I don't know. Millimeter. Not a lot. And then I need to do the same thing on the other, the other corner. Let's see. Come look, let's see what it looks like. Okay, grab that other face there. Yeah, grab that vertex. And then uh, pull him out. Same amount as to pull out the other one. Alright, yeah, that looks good. So it's starting to look like a, a square Star Tracker shroud. Some of them are square, some of them are. Uh, cylindrical you know, kind of cones uh, just depends on the particular star tracker model and remember that that bottom edge is still not uh, a steep enough angle it needs to come up more than that or the 3d printer won't be able to build it without like a lot of supports so I'm just going to select the whole thing here and then uh, maybe I'll skew it now I'm going to rotate it around um, Yeah, just skew it out that way like that. So I tweaked the whole face and pulled it up a little bit more. That should get me... I might be able to build that. Uh, let's see. Nah. 
All right, take the whole thing and move it out here where it belongs. I'm uh, going to rotate it around so that it's parallel to that instrument. Uh, what does it really look like? Well, they're smaller than that, but I'm not going to be able to print them as small to scale, so they're going to be a little bit big uh, in scale. So let's just make that thing approximately parallel to that. And then we need to uh, move it around a little bit. Uh, it remembers its original orientation. When you rotate it, it doesn't actually give you the axes uh, rotated. It, it leaves those X and Y uh, axes relative to its original. Uh, so that's kind of odd. So you're gonna, if you want to just move things along a line, you can't. You kind of move them back and forth. Uh, it's a free program. I can't complain too much. All right, so I'm going to copy and paste this. Uh, now I have another copy. Uh, move that away. Grab it. Rotate it around 180 degrees. Um, it does let you type the numbers in. The numbers when you type them don't actually show up here. So I'm going to grab that and move it uh, so that it's next to that other. And uh, oh, wrong. Wrong arrow. Go back down. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to move it vertically out of the plane. Uh, so I'm gonna z rotate up here. My view. There we go. Okay, make that look like that. All right. Let's see how close we are. That's eh, not bad. Like I said, there are, some of those objects are a little bit too big. I'm gonna move these back to the left a little bit here, um, just because it's gonna make it a little closer. It'll be very interesting to see if I can build this on the printer. All right, save a copy of that. That's pretty close. Save a copy of that and uh, see what we get. Kind of like slicing sushi. Not that I'd know or anything. Okay. 
There's the uh, lunar laser comm demonstration piece. I'm sorry, I forget. This is the box on the other side of the spacecraft. I can't remember what it is. Here's all the uh, rocket motors on the bottom. The field of rocket motors. And here's all the spacecraft, Laddie spacecraft uh, bodies. Um, I've got about 60 done. Uh, there's not quite enough of these little pieces. You can hear the MakerBot over there. He's re, 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 re. He's making more. I'm making these eight at a time. These are made four at a time, and the rocket bodies are made four at a time. Uh, that way, I, these take about four and a half hours. These take two and a half hours to do four, and these take an hour and forty minutes to do eight, uh, eight sets. So uh, here, I've got them all cut apart and uh, ready to glue together. So the, the fan at back here is on so that I don't uh, get overcome by the acetone fumes. This is, uh, this is not uh, grape upon. This is uh, acetone. Actually, it's got a little bit of ABS plastic dissolved in it. Um, I use that to get the plastic to stick to the, uh, the plastic and acetone solution to stick to the Kapton tape on the builder. Uh, here I'm making sure that I'm aligning one of the rocket motors. They're the same left and right with these uh, with the two antennas down that ridge. And uh, that's the orientation I see in the, most of the pictures. And uh, getting a collection of them built up here. I'm just dipping it in here with my finger. Acetone's the same stuff as fingernail polish remover, so it's uh, pretty benign. Uh, I'm not really worried about like. I don't want to breathe it for an extended period of time. That's why I have this fan on, but uh, there we go. All right, so these little guys are the loser, Lunar Laser Com demonstration, and they get this piece glued onto them. I'm doing that with uh, gel super glue. It's got a nice open working time. It lets you uh, put a dab on a couple of pieces at once. I'm doing four at a time. And uh, it stays gooey for quite a few minutes. Um, one, two, three, four, put the cat back on. These guys have a particular orientation, actually. They have a little, one of the corners has a little camper on it. Yeah. See, there's my little camper. And it goes out, it goes down and out. So the camper's kind of underneath here. You can hear the maker bot running in the background. It's making uh, eight more of these, uh, plus the. Um, the boxes, the module that goes on the other side is just a box. I made it in just a box. So those little boxes get glued on the other side of the spacecraft, but I don't have to like pre-assemble them. So, so I'm not done yet. There's still a pile of uh, little gingerbread parts. Here's all my uh, lunar laser com demonstration components that I glued up last night. Here's all the boxes that go on either side. There's still more lunar laser demonstrators to glue together. There's uh, more rocket motors that I built today, but I have the coolest fleet of uh, little spacecraft. Uh, I'm getting there. Uh, there's a lot of them to make. Uh, I'm trying to make uh, 60 or 70, so uh, I want to get 50 done at least to be able to take and give to everybody who's part of the NASA social. So, first time I've ever tried to do uh, quite this level of uh, mass production. Um, I've got a Kickstarter project that's going to come out here later in the fall to make more of the uh, little drums. Uh, you have to, here's a link to the video of building. Uh, the drums, uh, we've actually got little doombacks, little finger doombacks, and they play, and the heads are printed integral to the body, and it's all printed at one time. So getting a drum head that actually printed on the thingomatic was a bit of a trick, uh, something that I wanted to try and figure out how to do. So 
that, that ended up pretty cool. Um, and we're going to offer those uh, pretty much in bulk. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to limit that run to probably I don't know 150 units or something. Uh, but this has proved that even the uh, the little kit built thingomatic is doing a really great job at at being reliable. Uh, I can run it pretty much 24 hours a day. Um, I've run I don't know three and a half kilograms of plastic through it already, so uh, it's going really well. Um, hopefully the Kickstarter will allow me enough money to buy a bigger machine. Uh, the thing is kind of a gateway machine, I guess, to uh, 3D printing. But I'm having a really good time with it. Um, uh, got a, little, a lot of little satellites to finish up here yet. I need to count all the parts and figure out if I need any more of anything. Um, and, then I can, and then I can kind of make them four at a time. Uh, if I can get time to make any more. Uh, this is uh, Sunday, the September the 1st, and I have essentially two more days, three, maybe three more days. I have Monday, I have Sunday, today's Sunday, I have Monday and Tuesday, uh, Wednesday to finish by Tuesday night, because Wednesday I'm going to work, and after work I'm driving down to Wallops uh, Island to see the Laddie actually launch, and the NASA Social's on Thursday and Friday, and launch is Friday night, so... Uh, I'm not going to be able to have um, this video uh, part of the, uh, the Laddie launch itself, uh, but look for plenty more material from me on, on the Laddie launch itself and the National Social event. There'll probably be hours and hours of stuff. Um, I try and, and capture a lot of uh, uh, stuff from the launch events, and the, and the socials are really fun. This should be cool. Uh, we get two days of uh, riding around wallops and doing all kinds of fun stuff. So. <sighs> Back to satellites.